Coming up on This Week in Torrance, a local hospital receives top ratings across the board for their medical services. Then volunteers from the South Bay Village are honored for their hard work in assisting seniors. Plus, a new center is now open in Torrance, helping homeless women and children get back on their feet. And we have tips on how to make sure your packages are safe during the holidays. These stories are much more just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Jen Chai. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks so much for joining us. Here are your top stories. At the recent city council meeting, Patrick Sullivan was sworn in as Torrance's new city attorney. Prior to his recent appointment, Sullivan served as the assistant city attorney for approximately eight years. Throughout his career, Sullivan has represented the city in multiple trials. He has extensive experience working in both civil litigation, criminal prosecution, land use, and municipal law. Mr. Sullivan started his career with the city in 1994. He is replacing former city attorney John Fellows, who retired in September. More than 40 small businesses in Torrance will be offering great discounts for Small Business Week from November 25th through December 2nd. Businesses with the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce will offer exclusive discounts and savings when you mention Torrance Small Business Week at various stores. Now, discounts range from 10% off your entire purchase to complimentary services for new customers. This year, some of the businesses in Torrance participating are Absolution Brewery, Baroque Music, Walsers, and Bloom Dental. This recognizes small business owners and promotes shopping locally. The Small Business Administration announced that National Small Business Week will be from April 29th through May 5th next year. A Torch business announced that it's bringing more jobs to the city thanks to a tax credit program. Murty LLC was granted a $100,000 tax credit over the next five years to create nine new jobs at their Torrance facility. They were the only company from Torrance that applied and received this particular award. The California Competes Tax Credit Program is an income tax credit available to businesses who want to come, stay, and grow in the state of California. The city's Economic Development Department assisted businesses to apply for the program, which is negotiated by GoBiz. Well, millions of fire extinguishers are being recalled. The Consumer Product Safety Commission announced that the fire safety manufacturer, Kitty, is recalling nearly 38 million extinguishers that can clog and fail to activate when used. The agency has received reports of 16 injuries from smoke inhalation to minor burns and 91 cases of property damage associated with the issue. Officials are recommending owners to check their model number with the Consumer Product Commission safety list. You can call 855-271-0773 for a free replacement with a metal handle. The Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce Foundation kicked off LEAD, also known as Leadership, Exploration and Development, a new program to help young students get an inside look into various career paths. The foundation partners with principals, counselors, and teachers to choose 24 students from the Torrance Unified School District to participate in a six-month program. And twice a month, the student sessions are filled with presentations from leaders in the community and visits of various businesses in the area. Recently, Torrance sophomores participated in the City Day where they toured the courthouse, art museums, and visits from the city clerk and engineers who work in the city. This is not the first leadership program hosted by the Chamber. This is a spinoff of uh, Leadership Torrance and the focus now is to introduce sophomores from the four schools campuses to um, the leadership ideas. This program is very important to me. I'm uh, glad to be a part of it and honored that I was asked to be the vice chair of this program to help lead our students. The program gives students an opportunity to learn all they can from business and nonprofit leaders, as well as city employees as they participate in the upcoming sessions. The program ends on April of next year. Well, you can give back to the people in the South Bay area just in time for the holidays. In the main lobby of the West Annex at Torrance City Hall, you'll find the city's annual holiday can tree. Non-perishable food items will be collected throughout the season to provide less fortunate families with a holiday meal. The first pick update by the Salvation Army is Friday, November 17th at 9 a.m. 
You can also donate through early December for the holidays, which will be picked up on December 11th. If you're interested in dropping off perishable foods like frozen turkeys, hams, potato, yams, and fruit, it's recommended to drop off these items on the morning of the pickup dates. Well, still ahead, a local organization recognizes their volunteers for thousands of hours of hard work. Plus, Providence Little Company of Mary Medical Center receives top ratings for their services. Hi. Hi. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio, too, so you could focus. Right? Probably okay isn't okay. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. One hundred volunteers from across the South Bay teamed up to make a difference. They spent the day at the Madrona Marsh Preserve Nature Center where they planted 400 native plants and helped weed and water. Sunflowers and buckwheats were a few of the types of plants added to the marsh. It was part of National Make a Difference Day that is an annual community service event held on the fourth Saturday in October. Millions of people came together on this day across the nation to improve the lives of others. It is considered one of the largest volunteer efforts. The event started in 1992. A group of volunteers were recognized for helping seniors in our community. With a special lunch, some music, and a handful of awards, volunteers were in the spotlight for their commitment to the South Bay Village. This nonprofit, nonprofit organization partners volunteers with seniors to assist them with yard work, cooking, transportation, general household needs, and much more. And the mission of the South Bay Village is to help seniors age successfully in their homes. South Bay Village is currently helping 50 seniors with the help of 44 people. The organization is run completely by volunteers, and for many of them, it is more than just lending a helping hand. Just seeing them being happy that someone is spending some time with them, helping them out in the garden or helping them out with grocery shopping or just sitting and talking. It's just, it's very fulfilling to see them happy. That's, I think that's the most fulfilling part. I have the best job in the world because all I do is help seniors and have volunteers fulfill that wish that they have because they feel it's important to help seniors too. Since May 2015, volunteers of the South Bay Village have donated more than 5,000 hours to help seniors. Hand weaving is one of the oldest crafts of the world, the method of interlacing yarns and thread to create some form of fabric or cloth. And one group is keeping the skills and traditions of this art alive. Hosted by the Southern California Hand Weavers Guild, the Weaving and Fiber Festival brings together fiber enthusiasts from all over the world. The annual fundraiser was held at the Torrance Cultural Arts Center and showcased a diverse range of vendors, tools, supplies, and books for anyone interested in learning more about the craft. The highlight was all of the handcrafted items made from members of the guild on display and available for purchase. From floor mats, wraps, hats, to handbags, and the hundred different colors of thread and yarn. The festival had a lot to offer, and some artisans were in action outside, spinning and weaving fabric together using the same tools used thousands of years ago. The organization is committed to spreading the knowledge and practice of hand weaving and textile related crafts. A responsible dog owner is key in making sure your relationship with your furry friend grows. Reporter Abby Grimion spoke to Torrance Animal Control for some helpful tips. Owning a dog can be a source of unconditional love and a great way to get to know people in your community. However, owning a pet also requires responsibility and consideration of others. Officer LaRose of Torrance Animal Control encourages using common sense when thinking of adding a four-legged friend to your life. Start with taking a look at your own family. What 
what type of family are you? Are you a very active family? Are you a very relaxed family? And try to match a dog according to your family's personality so everybody will get along. You need to make sure your animal is properly vaccinated and, and healthy. You need to make sure your animal is licensed with whatever city that you're living in. Properly socialize your animal. Expose them to, to different sights, different sounds, different people, other people walking their animals. We talked with a few other dog owners in the park, and they all echoed the same sentiments as Officer LaRose. For me, I think it's having a properly trained dog and having them socialized so that when you're in a situation like this that you understand your dog, um, how they may or may not get along with other dogs, um, and just taking responsibility for that. Officer LaRose's most important advice for dog owners was about their leashes. Always make sure when your dog is out of your yard that it's on a leash. That's the safest thing to do. Leashes legally can only be as long as six feet. And that's honestly the safest. We see people, they're out and about with their dogs and they let them off leash. And we have a couple dogs that I think they're pretty well behaved, but this one in particular is a little sensitive. At times, be a little scary. Ava, you want your picture taken? <laughs> No. <laughs> and if the unthinkable happens and your dog escapes and is nowhere to be found, Officer LaRose gives this advice. Check your local shelters. Check more than one shelter. And I would personally go and actually walk that shelter because they don't always know what they have in the back. Check with all the local veterinarians. A lot of times if a good Samaritan finds a dog out stray, they may take it to a veterinarian to see if they can scan it for a microchip. The best thing to do if you find a stray dog in Torrance is to take it either here to us at Animal Control Office or to take it to the Carson Shelter. Taking these steps will make sure your dog will be returned to you as quickly as possible because as Roger Karras once said, dogs are not our whole life but they make our lives whole. Just take care of them, walk them, love them and uh, just take them as your own kids. Loving our dogs as kids because we should all strive to be the person our dogs think we are. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Abby Germion. Thanks, Abby. You can also learn more about responsible dog ownership by going online to akc.org. You can also tune into City Cable's Canine Corner with Rhiannon Tritanich, where she shares stories of sweet dogs looking for their forever homes. The Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce is bringing back a program that helps leaders and business grow. 25 spots are open for the Leadership Torrance Class of 2018. The Chamber is currently accepting applications. It's a developmental program that helps current and future leaders in business and other community organizations to develop their leadership skills, community knowledge, and professional networks. Now to apply, head to torrancechamber.com. A new center opened in Torrance with a mission to support and protect disadvantaged women and children. Torrance City leaders and the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce welcomed the grand opening of Hope Community Center, a safe place that offers shelter, education and support services to homeless and disadvantaged women and children in the South Bay. Community's Child is a program that assists women and children to achieve self-sufficiency. They provide transitional housing through residential living and personal development to homeless single mothers over the age of 18 years old with an infant under the age of 12 months. Maximum length of stay is 24 months. For more information, head to communitieschild.org. A South Bay businesswoman is also bringing hope to the South Bay community by giving back to those in need. Owner of Shiny Little Blessings, Sabine Shepke, has created a new Victorian collection to her jewelry line to assist Torrance-based organization Family Promise of the South Bay. Fifteen percent of the proceeds from this line will help homeless families. Shiny Little Blessings are custom jewelry pieces that are inspiring. The most well-known pieces in her collection are of spoonheads. Shepke started the business in 2010 and has sold more than 40,000 pieces. The South Bay resident says she served for months to find the perfect organization she could give back to. Family Promise of the South Bay is a nonprofit that uses a community based approach to combat family homelessness. You can check out her jewelry line at shinylittleblessings.com.
The holiday season is around the corner, and it's also a time when shoppers fall prey to theft. There are some steps you can take to protect your delivery items before they arrive on your doorstep. According to UPS and FedEx, be aware of where you're sending your package. Have it delivered to your office or to a neighbor if you are not home. You can also request a signature during a pickup or request a doorbell ring. Knock upon delivery with a note. FedEx also offers an online delivery manage for instructions on residential deliveries, including time, location, and other safety details. Similarly, UPS offers a service allowing people to sign up for a text alert with a delivery time window. You can always redirect your packages even when they're already on the way through FedEx. The Torrance Fire Department continues to receive more accolade this week. The American Heart Association recognized TFD's Emergency Management Systems team with the Gold 2017 Mission Lifeline Award. It recognizes efforts in providing timely treatment for heart attack victims and acknowledges the achievements of pre-hospital providers and their collaboration with each other. Last year, the department implemented the use of Zoll heart monitors that allows personnel to communicate effectively with local hospitals. The use of technology increases the survival rate of someone having a heart attack. The award was given based on data Torrance Fire collected and submitted to the EMS agency. The award is given out in bronze, silver, and gold. A local hospital is being honored once again. A report released recently by Health Grades recognized all six Providence Health and Services in Southern California Medical Centers for excellent clinical outcomes, including the location in Torrance. Health Grades is a national independent source of hospital quality ratings and each year evaluates performances of nearly 4,500 hospitals nationwide for 34 of the most common inpatient procedures and conditions. Providence Little Company of Mary Medical Center in Torrance received five stars for our procedures, including spinal fusion surgery, treatment of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, treatment of sepsis, and C-section deliveries. They were also honored for being among the top 5% of the nation for patient safety five years in a row. Still ahead, upcoming events happening right here in the city. Plus, a preview of what to expect on the next episode of the Sports Desk. You're watching This Week in Torrance. Listen, I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. Welcome back, everybody. Here's some upcoming events to mark on your calendar. El Camino College is hosting their college night to all South Bay residents. People are invited to stop by on November 15th from 5.30 to 8 p.m. The open house event will have workshops, a resource fair, and tours for students, parents, and others. Check in on the first floor of the bookstore. And you can register now to receive a free rain barrel at the next giveaway put on by the South Bay Environmental Services Center. You can call 310-371-4633. A rain barrel helps in collecting and reusing rainwater to reduce the water flow into storm drains. And don't forget the city's annual torch, Turkey Trot. It will take place on November 23rd. Underway, it gets underway at 8 a.m. Registration is $30. You can sign up now. Let's find out what's happening in the torch sports world. What's going on, AJ? Hey guys, here's what you'll see this week on the Sports Desk. A champion is crowned in Pioneer League football. Danny Miskell tells us how North grabbed the chip. West was fighting for their playoff lives. Anthony Scott breaks down their gridiron grapple with Torrance. CIF playoffs are underway in high school girls volleyball. We'll get you caught up on all of our local teams. And it's playoff time in high school girls tennis as well. And Cedric Welton was there for North High's second round matchup. All this and so much more. Remember to watch the Sports Desk at 4 and 9.30 p.m. Right here on City Cable. Jen and Ben, back to you.
Thanks so much, AJ. Well, that does it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Jen Chun. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.